Welcome to CTI's business intelligence platform, what we refer to as our BIP. This is a way that we can visualize data, collect data, analyze data, and use data in a way that's been dreamed of, but not really been seen that much before, in a way that organizations can do their monitoring and evaluation and that full analytics. I'm gonna give you a little bit of an overview. As you can see here, this is an overview of the country of Uganda. We can, of course, change the background to give it like a navigation background or to give it an imagery background. I'm going to... This is a basically we've taken over here. This is information that we can go all the way down sub counties, parishes, all the way down to all 44,000 individual villages. And we're able to go and show overlay over here religious data, health information. Uh, financial institution information and um, religious institution information and overlay all of that information over here. Then we can go and drill down. We can go down to, let's say, a district. So we can go, let's go and pick in a district of, let's say, Busia. So the area of Busia, as you can see here, it's you know, kind of, it's a uh, you know, little bit to the, to the far side next door to Kenya. Right, so you can analyze this area over here. So you can see the population, 467 villages, 60,000 households, 280,000 individual people that live here. And this is as of all the, U, this is the, U, the UBOS, Uganda Bureau of Statistics Information as of 2010. This will tell you how many, how many Catholic churches, mosques, different religious institutions, how many colleges, schools, how many financial institutions there are, how many health facilities there are. And let's say you just wanted to drill down to the health facilities, you could just remove all this information and you're left with the 39 health facilities. And then you can click on the individual health facilities and you'll be able to go and see over here, as you can see, this is the, the, um, uh, the particular the hospital in HC2, right? And this has all been mapped out by Macquarie University or part of the UBOS system. And then we can literally go drill down to a particular village. Let's say we want to go and find to the village of Alupe. So we go into the village of Alupe. You can literally drill down over here. All the activities that are taking place directly in Alupe. And you'll be able to see that there's one church. Um, you know, And it's, it's a very small area, 243 households, 1,200 people. But you'll be able to go and drill down. So imagine now if somebody's sick, we're able to go and pinpoint where a person lives or where a facility is and the activities that take place within either that person's life or their activity of that particular location and be able to drill down all the way to the village and accumulate all the way up to the complete, the complete country and accumulate as you see over here, we go and we go and remove the, we reset the village name, you go and reset the district name. And as you do that, you're accumulating up and up and up for back to 44,000 villages. 7 million households. So we have this unique ability to do this. Another example of, this is now an example of more specific data. This is designed along with our partner, the Bowickway District Health Officer. So we've identified with him all 47 facilities, health facilities within the area of Bowickway. How many people live in Bowickway? Well, as of the census, 400, 2010, 427,000 people, 95,000 households, how many facilities? 47. How many have got a mortuary? Three. Right? How many beds, hospital beds are there in all of these hospitals? 626. How many have got radiology departments? How many have got laboratories? How many have got uh, ambulances? How many have got optical services, dental? So you've got all the breakdown, the levels of the services. How many are full hospitals? How many HC2s? How many are open 24 hours? How many are open you know, kind of just during the day. And we can now go and click. So you click on which are the places that are open 24 hours. And then you'll say, okay, I'd like to find a government facility that's open 24 hours a day. So you've actually only got six of them. And of those six, there's 193 beds. What's the breakdown? There's actually one hospital and five HC3s in terms of in that, in that group. So you can keep breaking things down. How many have got surgery? So you've got, you've actually got one of them which has got surgery and you'll be able to go and find that exact facility instantly. You'll be able to go and click over here, the Kawala Hospital, and then you see who's in charge. Mr. 
Kabiru is in charge. This is his phone number, all the different facilities that they have there. Who's in charge of the different facilities? So you've got a tremendous capacity to be able to go and drill down, you know, kind of within the data that's being collected. And, um, and then you are able to go also, let's say a particular parish, let's say you want to see the parish of the Wickways, so you'll be able to see that there are, well, there are actually four, three facilities over here, but how many, but there are only three of them that open 24 seven. But if you actually want to see how all four facilities, you'll see that there are four facilities. One of them is open 24 seven. And one of them, four of them, are, three of them are open 24 seven. One of them is open only, you know, kind of certain hours during the day. But you can keep drilling down. You'll be able to go and look for individual locations and get all the information. So this is what we call on the left-hand side level one data, which is fixed data, which enables, you know, kind of whoever's looking to create the data to be able to go and, you know, kind of instantly drill in, drill out about the data, be able to see what's the population. And this is Bewickway Parish. There's a population of 8,500. You'll be able to do analytics. How many hospital beds are there compared to the population size? How many have got Wi-Fi facilities compared to the number of beds, compared to the number of facilities? And then what we've done on the right-hand side is we've created what we call level two data, which is how many people have come into these facilities today, this week, this past month, this past year, and why are they coming in? COVID-related, gender, age breakdown, diabetes, or heart disease, or they're coming in with a stroke or with mental health problems or trauma problems. And we can keep adding to the number of issues that we want to be able to track. And this doesn't necessarily just need to be for health facilities. This could be for educational facilities. This could be for any sort of a business or any sort of a government agency to be able to track. Now, one of the beautiful features that we're including in here is the ability to organize Zoom calls and organize Zoom webinars. So in this, for example, if the district health officer would like to arrange a meeting with the uh, people who are in charge of the HIV departments in all the in, in the various hospitals, he'll be able to go and click, be able to go and do his um, filtering, and then be able to go and communicate. If he wants to do a webinar for all the nurses, or if you're running an organization, you want to be able to see how much money have you distributed to how many of the different locations, what programs are being offered, how many people. So we've got the capacity to be able to go and do all of this, um, all of this uh, data Know, kind of analytics. Now, another very important point that we've built, some of you will you'll, you'll be familiar with our Life Health wallet, which is in the Life Health system where we go and provide healthcare and, uh, and data services for the, for the patients and for the hospitals and for the clinics and for the doctors. So we're able to collect a lot of data, as you see over here. This is the individual people where they live. Now, we're never going to show where an individual person lives, where we can take you down to the village. Health issues, have they, you know, sickle cell, have they got disabilities, have they agreed to be a blood donor, have they got blood pressure problems? And we've created algorithms for all of these different areas where we can be determining different people's sicknesses. But this can, again, this can be for any sort of data. I'm just going to show this vaccination, being vaccinated or not. I'm just going to quickly show over here what we call our sandbox. This is how we actually go and visualize data. And as you can see over here, most of the data that we have, uh, this is a synthetic group of 300 people. So the, the data is concentrated within these seven, these eight, nine villages. So these are actually the names of the villages. And if you wanted to see kind of all the data, meaning how many people have been vaccinated for uh, with the Moderna, or with AstraZeneca, or who has been vaccinated for the shingles, or who's been who's got a vitamin what's the population with vitamin d deficiencies or with eos deficiencies or with a you know the red blood count which is too low or too high all of this information testosterone levels disability levels you want to see diabetes or any of the other you know bone density tb or anything like that so we've got all of this information that's collected and visualized over here let's say for example you wanted to see from, from the Bubwa perspective, how many people in Bubwa, you know, have got, there are 107 and you can see a breakdown. If you wanted to see how many people with diabetes live in Bubwa, right? So you can see that there are 39 people living in the town of Bubwa, right, with diabetes. That's a, you know, it's a pretty high percentage. But if we, so whether it, where we want to base, 
specifically do general analytics or specific analytics, we're in a position to be able to do that. So let's say we want to do for clinical trials. Let's say an organization, a pharmaceutical company, wants to do clinical trials for, for, for example, for diabetes. And they'll click on, we would click on, say, okay, you want people with diabetes? We've got 115 of those. Well, we actually, it's a very unique product. It's for people with diabetes who are positive with HIV. So we go to HIV, we find HIV, we click positive, and now you've got 25 people. But we can only actually do the work on people who've got, for example, who've given permission to be part of the clinical trial. So how many are there? There are 19 people. Well, we also, this trial is, is really for people between the age of, let's say, 21 and 50, you know, 52. So now you're down to 12, 10 people, but now we're able to go and instantly reach out to those 10 people and say, there's an opportunity for you to be part of a clinical trial. Would you like to be part of a clinical trial? And we know exactly where they are. They're in Bubwa, they're in Lagola. So it's very easy for people to know, you know, where in the country, what diseases, if we want to go and do clinical trials, because we, we don't want to do a clinical trial in 17 places. We want to do it in two. If you wanted to do it in 17, then we can go and do a breakdown. So this is how you know, some of the analytics of this data works. Let me just go and reset some of this data over here. So now let's go and do another little example. And in this particular example, we're gonna go and we're going to have a young woman who's having a baby and she needs to get blood immediately. So the, but there isn't time to go to Kampala to go and collect the, the blood from Kampala. It has to be done immediately. The lady is having a baby now and she's bleeding. So we're going to see where is she. So she's in the district of the parish of Lagoba. So we go into Lagoba and we see over here that uh, so they're within. So let's go and choose a population age. It's going to be, let's say, people from the age of 16 to 64 that we're going to be willing to take their blood. And then we go to we obviously can't take people who are, who are positive with HIV. So we go for the negative. And then we have to find people who have agreed to be blood donors. You're now down to 117 people. We don't want people who've got malaria. Right? That would not be good. And then we don't want people who've got um, various liver diseases or hepatitis diseases. So let's get rid of those people. So now what you're left with is 88 people. So now it really breaks down to what blood group this woman is from. If she is unfortunate enough to be an O negative, so she, you click on the O negative and you see that there are two people, one in Bubwa, one in Sanzi. So depending where the young lady is, we'll go and reach out to the person who's closest and say, hey, are you willing to go and give some blood? So it's a very, very powerful tool, you know, kind of that we've built over here. And as I said, we refer to this as our business intelligence platform. And this can be tailor-made for any particular product, any particular region, any particular country, and uh, we look forward to having further conversations with you. Thank you very, very much.